Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Um, starting with the Daily Mirror, Jenny, I know you're slightly aggrieved at the uh, very pro-Tory newspapers, of which there are a plenty. So we start with this one. Oh, I wouldn't call it aggrieved. I'm just trying to to balance out the coverage a little bit, since that's <laughs> what we're trying to do. Um, yes, I mean, I did want to have some pro-Labour coverage or something to balance this out, but actually, I don't like any of these sorts of front pages, and I particularly don't like it once you get to the inside pages of the Daily Mirror where they've got a picture of Theresa May as Pinocchio. And the spread on the other side says she's a liar and you can't believe a single word she says, which is apparently what Labour's Yvette Cooper told the nation. Now, I think this, I'm all for calling politicians out when they lie and when they get things wrong, but I think statements that just say that generally all politicians are liars, no matter which side you're mm. on, really undermine democracy. They undermine respect for politicians. They make people less likely to vote. They make people less likely to try and get involved themselves and um, actually I can't bear it. Now some of these specific statements here are perfectly true. When, when, she, when she says here that we've given the NHS what they need, the Tories didn't, they gave the NHS far less than um, the NHS had asked for, they pressured just before the last elections to Simon Stevens who was running NHS England to put forward a bid that was much lower than the sum he actually needed. We all know that the NHS is under huge pressure. And on schools, Mrs May says that we've protected the school's budget. Now, in real terms, every school faces cuts of more than 6% per, per pupil, according to the Institute for Fiscal Studies. So, by all means, call politicians out on individual pledges when they're not true. But don't say you can't believe anything they say. And I think if you go back to the previous page you had there where Mrs May is sort of... No, it's Pino one. Pinocchio. Yeah, one. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, one thing, they, got this, they, they say the PM is exposed as a hypocrite there. Can I also just sort of say the mirror is guilty of huge hypocrisy um, on this as well because if we were sat here about 18 months ago or so, they had a front page splash saying get rid of Jeremy Corbyn. This own newspaper that's so proudly asking people to vote for the Labour leader um, tomorrow actually as is true of nearly all Labour MPs when they try to get rid of Labour leader, they don't have confidence in the man that they are now asking the nation to choose as their Prime Minister. But to and be that, fair... And that, that is the problem with the Mirror's very sort of morally righteous high ground position today. It doesn't fit with the facts of very recently. Well, to be fair, they do think that Jeremy Corbyn has changed some of his positions and that he has grown into this job. And so they are m making a different verdict from that which they would have done 18 months ago. And you only have to look at what's happened with his popularity around the country. As more people have seen him, he's a much better speaker. Um, and he's com coming across in a lot of ways in the interviews that he's given as unexpectedly thoughtful and humane and knowledgeable. Now, people may not think that his policies add up to something which the country can realistically afford, nor, nor are they necessarily sure that he would implement them all successfully. But they clearly find them appealing, and he's a far better politician than he was 18 months ago. Would, would, would you vote for him, though, now, Jenny, as, um, to I, be for Prime I, Minister? Well, I won't vote for him, but that doesn't you make me characteristic of the country. Well, well, we'll see. I think we're not necessarily <laughs> seeing the, the real Jeremy Corbyn, though, at the moment. So we've had this terrorist horror um, this week in London Bridge, near a location where both Jenny and I work. And it wasn't so long ago that Jeremy Corbyn was opposing the shoot to kill policy. No, he wasn't, Tim. We've debated which, this in the which, last which press review. Which is essential for keeping us safe. And I think the Tim, real... Tim, you can't go and misrepresenting him like that. I'm the com... BBC Trust inquired into this, and they said that... His interview, in which he appeared to say he didn't back shoot to kill, had been falsely edited. And the head, and, of, the, and the and, head of the BBC and, News stood by the report that Laurel the Kunzberg, BBC, the, the BBC, the BBC political editor, gave. The BBC gave. Trust so, are the people uh, of the arbiters of this. And Jeremy Corbyn has been absolutely clear since the London Bridge killings that he would back shoot to kill in instances like these. You have to give him credit for having... I made we, that perfectly clear. There is no doubt where he stands on this issue. I, you may I, not like what you think was his past position, but you can't tar him with that with that. We brush certainly now. can, because rather than his position taking during the heat of a campaign, I would rather judge him for many years of positions where he has constantly mm. apologised 
the terrorist and extremist uh, organisation. Do you think this is undemocratic uh, because traditionally the day of polling gets the vote out in the newspapers, doesn't it? Do you think the same is true of the Daily Mail front page? Uh, let's reignite British spirit. Theresa May's rallying cry, she warns Corbyn will tax your work, tax your garden, your home and your inheritance. And would you say the same too of The Sun? Don't chuck Britain in the Corbyn. And then listing some of the elements, Tim, that you were beginning to explain... Um, which means you find him a little unappealing as uh, a leader. <laughs> I, well, one of the things, of course, we're seeing um, uh, in this election is, Jenny's right, what she said at the beginning of this uh, press review is the newspapers are overwhelmingly in favour of the Conservatives. And part of, I think, the outcome of this election will depend upon the power still of the press, which is, I think, I'm afraid, decreasing, but also the increasing power of social media. Because if you spend time on Twitter or Facebook, where sort of younger people are more active, you'll find a very much more pro-Corbyn sort of mood. And so what is going to be the real force in this politics in this election? Probably for this election, the newspapers will probably still be much more mm. powerful. But as elections go by, that power of the social media, Twitter, Facebook, is going to grow and grow. And these, pe these front pages, as funny and powerful as the sun's is tonight will be less important. The interesting thing about that is that I wonder how the Tory party will do when it hasn't got such a powerful force behind it. At the moment, undoubtedly, as we've just seen tonight, yeah. <clears throat> the assumption is that a, a Labour leader is often either, either menacing or a fool and often portrayed as both simultaneously, which is quite hard to manage. But what, once the, once, <laughs> I think once the papers... Jeremy Corbyn's managed there. No, he's not menacing. But once the, what, but one, well, once the papers have, have lost that authority mm -hmm. and once more people are looking at social media, it'll be very interesting to see whether the Tory vote begins to drop. I don't, I don't think David Cameron would agree that the, um, the press weren't powerful. You know, I think he was the first Tory leader during the Brexit campaign to feel the force and no, opposition... No, no, I said they are powerful. ..of, of, of the press. And, no, no, uh, no, that, no, my point but is... less powerful that, in that future. Shift, yes. no. no, I think the great shock for David Cameron during the Brexit campaign was that as a Tory leader for the first time he found that the right-wing press were not on his side mm. and in fact he didn't quite know how to deal with that because Labour leaders get accustomed to thinking that you cannot have the press expecting to take your side you work around it. He had the treatment that Neil Kinnock and Kinnock exactly. and Jeremy Corbyn and this it shows now. how powerful the press are at the and this presumably is why they're still backing uh, Theresa May so vociferously because they believe she is the right person to do Brexit, which is what they will want well, in the first Well, I, I, I think, just to step back a bit, they probably think that Theresa May is the right person to protect the interests of the newspaper proprietors. Well, come on. I think there's also a very strong belief in these newspapers for Brexit. They back Brexit very hard. And that, of course, is one of the big conclusions of this um, campaign. Um, the one political party that um, was absolutely opposed to Brexit tried to make um, overturning the Brexit referendum result an issue in this election, the Liberal Democrats. One thing I think we're pretty sure about, we're, we're not entirely sure about the outcome of this general election, but the Liberal Democrats have gone nowhere. And that's clear now that the British people, whether they will remain in the past or leave, now think that the most important thing is that we just get on with implementing the decision that we've taken. And I think that's, that's a credit but I think, I to Theresa May and Jeremy I... Corbyn, who both respected the result. I'm afraid the Liberal Democrats are not respecting the result of paying an electoral price, which I'm glad to see that they are paying. But what is not at all clear is that the electorate actually wants the hard Brexit that Theresa May clean is, is clean about to bring clean about. Clean Brexit. Because, Real Brexit. Because she true hasn't Brexit, spelt not out what, hard Brexit. Because she hasn't spelt out what that is. And there's no question that in last year's referendum people were not voting for a particular kind of Brexit. May has taken it upon herself to decide that what she's going to bring is something that is a hard Brexit. But Boris Johnson during the campaign and, and immediately afterwards said there's no need to leave the single market, there's no need to leave the, the customs yeah, union and the Tory party have taken it upon themselves Je to decide that they will walk away from all these obligations. Jenny. And the British people don't understand at the moment You're stuck in the, the terrible Jenny. consequences okay. of that because nobody if has spelled it out. Interrupt this party political manifesto for the Remain what campaign. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm like your PPV for leavers. Do you not really recognise that Theresa May has been absolutely clear, to use one of her favourite expressions, that yes. she wants to leave the single market, she wants to leave the customs union. Those are the implications of her Brexit strategy. She's been very precise about no, she, that. It, if it, she gets, it does get that, if, but she's if, saying that the country didn't necessarily vote for that. But now, though, no, she's been clear no, in this general election, no. if she gets a majority, and I'll tell you why she'll not. have an absolutely clear mandate no, for it. That's Come on. That is absolutely false, and I'll tell you why it's false. People are voting for the Tories because of their perceived competence rather than because of their Brexit manifesto, number one. Secondly, 
people have no idea what the consequences are going to be because May and no one else has spelt it out to them, yeah. which is that Britain is going to be a great deal poorer, people are going to be more highly taxed, the economy is going to shrink and people are going to have to work longer. And they Here don't understand the party that. political broadcast No, I'm, I'm fr let's, let's, let's get together. Liberal let's Democrat, get, you and your dwindling number of Romaniacs. Let's get together in five years. I just, I'm, I really fear that the country um, doesn't know what's coming down the tracks and we're going to be awfully shocked in a year or so when it starts being apparent. I wish that wasn't true. Uh, just very quickly, um, you picked this for the Corbyn will tax you while you work, etc, etc. Your point being... He well, believes it. <laughs> I think one of the more regrettable aspects of this campaign, and we're seeing it um, throughout the Western world actually, is any politician that uh, wants to restrict anyone's benefits in any way, whether it's a, a pensioner or someone younger, or wants to um, uh, increase taxes, it's a complete electoral no-no. Mm -hmm. Throughout the Western world, the deficits are still huge. Remember the mm -hmm. Ed Miliband who got to, attacked for forgetting the deficit in that famous party? And who's mentioned speech? it in this election? The whole mm -hmm. country seemed to yeah. almost forgotten the deficit. And they're all borrowing more, aren't they? And no, no one is willing to face up <coughs> to the tough choices on either spending restraint or tax so, rises so you're quite that, are this, Tim. That, that are necessary to um, bring our country's Fiscal situation Just very quickly, do you, do you mean you approve of the fact that he's, be, he's being honest about the need to tax well, he's not, more? Jeremy Corbyn's not being honest. What he says is that a few extra taxes on the rich will pay for his massive spending programme. That is not true. He will have to raise taxes across the board. So you're criticising all parties for not being honest about None tax. of them are being honest. Um, and very quickly, the Lord Sugar story. We just wanted this because he thought yeah. the sight <laughs> of a tax cheque being written for £58 million was just something that we could all sit back and reel at the sight of it. Yeah. I mean, so, good for him. He, he looks like a man who's not a tax evader. He's not putting his stuff offshore. He's not attempting not to pay his fair share. The fact that he earns so much that his fair share is 58 million and this is, is quite mind-boggling. Yeah, this was a post that was uh, deleted by him. Um, people were accusing him of not backing Jeremy Corbyn because he wants to avoid paying tax. And so he published his 58 million pound tax bill. I've been